So you made some stuff in your shop. You want to sell it. You sold it. Now you want to ship it. We're going to talk about it and the crap that can happen coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. What we're talking about here is selling your stuff and shipping it and all the things that are involved. I, I should say on a limited basis. I'm not going to go into great detail on setting up websites or setting up stores. I'm just going to give you some highlights on our experiences. We've been selling what they call e-commerce since, uh, since 1999. So therefore I have a lot of experience with this. And we have run into some things uh, along the way. Of course, you always will. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So let's say you built, and I'm using this for an example. This is a bluebird house. Let's say you built these bluebird houses in mass in your shop, and you want to sell them. That's not a problem. eBay. Okay, that's one place. But in our experience in the last... I would say five to seven years, eBay has turned into more like a yard sale. Okay, you want, let's say you want $20 for this. You'll get them people that'll come back, give you 10 and you ship it for free. Uh, no. So that's one of the things with eBay. Otherwise, eBay could be a good outlet. Um, if you have something that's very, very unique and it has not been like mass produced in China because there's a lot of that crap on eBay of stuff that's been manufactured overseas that people are selling here. But if you have something good that's handcrafted, uh, it doesn't cost much to list stuff on eBay. You can set up a store even, and it's not that expensive. So that's one outlet. That's actually where we started. Uh, the next best thing I would say would be a website. We've had a website since the inception of our business, and it's done very, very well. Uh, when you first set up a website, you won't get many hits on it because it needs to get through a what they call SEO, which is search engine op optimization. I'm not going to go into detail on that. I'm sure there's a ton of YouTube videos on how to get uh, a better SEO and how to appear higher in Google search. And there's all kinds of tricks and things you can do with keywords and meta tags. And that's a whole nother department. We're going to talk about selling and shipping your stuff here. So next place, Amazon. You have to be pretty much invited to sell on Amazon, and we do sell on Amazon. Uh, there are some caveats there, and I'll get into those here in a little while. Uh, it is a good market. It does have its down points, which I, like I said I'll get into in a little bit. And there's Etsy, and we do quite a bit on Etsy. One of the great things about Etsy is they don't, at least they're not supposed to allow, and there's very little of it, of stuff made overseas that you're just going to buy and resell. Uh, that doesn't fly on Etsy. The stuff on Etsy needs, you need to make it. So if you're making, you know, birdhouses, beehives, air fresheners, t-shirts, any of that kind of stuff, you know, the crafts, things that are unique, things that are handmade, Etsy is your place to go for that kind of thing. Uh, other sites, uh, of course, there's Shopify, and we don't currently use Shopify. We could, but I don't want to get into yet another uh, avenue. We don't need it. We have plenty of business without it. Uh, you can even sell through Walmart. I mean, there's other places even besides that. But I'm not going to get into all those. If you want to do a Google search and do some research, you can find all these different avenues. Okay, so now we're going to get into the, the selling part. Uh, you sold it. If it's on eBay, Amazon, or Etsy, you have to, in that listing, say how soon you're going to ship it. So let's say you say, I'm going to ship it within five days. You need to do that. You need to have the tracking numbers uploaded. That will affect your seller rating. And in, on eBay, for example, they have what's called DSR, which is a detailed seller rating. You know, item as described, you know, good uh, communication, um, item shipped on time, tracking number uploaded. You know, you actually got what you ordered. And you ordered a birdhouse and didn't get a can of oil or something. You know, that, that that's not a good thing to happen. On Amazon, it is absolutely required that you get the 
shipping confirmation up and the tracking information up in that set period of time. If you say you're going to ship it in five days and you don't ship it for six or seven days, if you do that a couple times, you're going to get suspended. That's just the way Amazon is. It's uh, one of their rules and it's just the way it is and it's not hard to abide by the rules if you leave yourself enough time. In other words, let's say you're selling these birdhouses. Don't say I've got a hundred of these birdhouses to sell when you've only got maybe five and then you get 90 orders. You have to get them things up and out and out the door and that tracking number uploaded within that five day that period that you put in. So keep that in mind. Now on Etsy, you don't necessarily have to get it up and shipped by the date you said, but it will affect your ratings as a seller. So if you're shipping birdhouse, I'm just using this as an example. We actually don't sell these. I'm just using it as an example. You need to have that up there and shipped by your, let's say, five day period that you specified and the tracking number uploaded. Um, we use an automated software, it's called Sixbit. It's not sponsored by them, but we use that to manage our shipping because we do such a large volume, it would be almost impossible for us to do one to two hundred orders a day and have to upload everything manually. So we pay for this Sixbit software and it takes care of eBay, Amazon, and Etsy. So I don't have to mess around. And also when you get an order, downloads it, sends it right out here to our shipping department. I'm I'm in the shop, but on the other side of the shop here is where we ship from. Uh, this is a three bay large garage and the center bay is our main shipping area. It's where we have all our racks for the UPS and USPS going out. And the third bay is where we store our forklift. Yes, I have a forklift. We need it for what we do. We get boxes by the pallet. And I'll get into boxes and packaging here in a minute. And we also store our boxes and cardboard inserts and packing materials over there in that third bay. Along with a lot of junk, but there's some flat surfaces over there. And if you're like me, you get a flat surface. There's going to be something on it. So, okay, you've sold it. Now you need to ship it. How are you going to do it? Well, there's different ways you can do it. Um, there's, of course, there's UPS, there's FedEx, DHL, uh, USPS, Speedy. There's a lot of carriers. You need to uh, settle on one or two. For us, we use uh, United States Postal Service, USPS, and we use UPS. The uh, reason I use UPS over FedEx is I get a better rate from UPS. Makes a difference. So let's say you're shipping something that costs $16 to ship at UPS. It's $16.50 on FedEx. Oh, what's 50 cents? Take that times several hundred, and that makes a difference. And we also have had uh, no problems with UPS. Uh, another thing you have to think about is insurance. Uh, the first $99 value on a UPS shipment is automatically insured on uh, postal service and priority mail. It's automatically insured unless it's perishable. If you ship something perishable and it gets there dead or destroyed or rotten or whatever, well, you're going to be reshipping it. I mean, they, they won't take any liability for that. In fact, I've had cases where they, we've had USPS packages lost. They just flat lost them. Can't find them. So I file a claim. No, it's a perishable item. I don't care if it's perishable or not. You lost the damn thing. You know, and I've gone back and forth, and I've, I've won some of the battles, and I've lost some of the battles. So I'm thinking about UPS. It's the same way. They... If it's a perishable item, it's a little bit of a gray area. So if a package gets there and it's destroyed, let's say that, oh, well, the truck ran over it when they were delivering it or something. Yeah, they'll cover that. But if you uh, ship something like, we're in Central North America or we're in Illinois, and let's say I'm shipping something to Oregon or Maine. Either way, that's five-day transit if you ship UPS ground. If it's a perishable item and it's during the summer, odds are it won't be any good when it gets there. And if it's uh, just like burned up from the heat, or if it's frozen in the wintertime, no, they won't cover it, not on a perishable item. If you're shipping uh, birdhouses, and it's property packaged, and it gets broke or destroyed or lost, 
there's no problem with a UPS claim. Uh, USPS, on the other hand, will require all kinds of documentation, and you can't just like write up an invoice on your computer and say, well, here, here's what I sold it for. You actually have to have the documentation from the e-commerce site that it's sold from. Uh, whether it be on Etsy or Amazon or eBay, you can, get, you can download those transactions from there. On our website, we use WooCommerce, so it's very simple to download it there. It's just a pain to have to do that. Well, next we'll get into containers. So, if it's a small item, birdhouse, uh, the USPS, if you're using priority mail, you can get these boxes, and there's these are only three of the different sizes here. Uh, if I was shipping this birdhouse, I would use what they call number seven here. Because it'll fit in it with packaging around it just fine. It would also sort of fit in this, but you don't have any room for any cushioning or packaging. Now, yeah, granted, a birdhouse is pretty rugged and it's not going to break, but let's say you uh, made yourself some ceramic coffee mugs and you have them all neatly engraved or uh, printed on on there. You want to have good packaging around it, bubble wrap. Uh, what they call styrofoam peanuts or the cornstarch peanuts and let me give you a caution about the cornstarch peanuts they're fine unless they get wet the great thing about cornstarch peanuts is they're biodegradable they break down instantly once they get wet if you're shipping something that has a moisture content for example a lot of what we ship are plants we would never ever use cornstarch peanuts and I don't like using styrofoam peanuts because they're not really recyclable unless someone uses them to ship again. What we generally use is shredded paper. We have a big paper shredder that we shred newspaper with. Not the cross cut, but the long strips. Makes great packing. So think about Pick them shredders up pretty cheap. We happen to have a big commercial one because we go through so much. That's one way to do it. Now, so you're not shipping USPS. You're shipping UPS or FedEx or DHL or a non-post office carrier. You can't use one of these boxes and ship UPS. It says so right on here. It's the property of the U.S. Postal Service provided solely for use in sending priority mail shipments. Misuses may be a violation of federal law. This package is not for resale. Therefore, if somebody's trying to sell you these boxes, they're full of, you know what? Go on the USPS.com website, go on the shipping supply tab, Order all you want to a point, and they'll get there in a few days to a few weeks to a couple months, depends on what they have in stock. And uh, yeah, that's kind of been a bit of a big thing. The spring when we really ramp up, you know, we uh, we also use what's called a triangle box, and I'll have one here to show you here in a minute. We order those well in advance because we never know when we're going to get them mystery thing. Uh, the small ones here, this is called number, a number four box. We usually get these 200 at a time because it's not uncommon for us to crank out a hundred of these in a week. Uh, just happens it fits perfect with one of the items we sell which happens to be a three pot set of ground covers. And they fit perfect in this box. Plenty of room for the culture book, tacky slip, identification tag, and our USDA license. So it all fits in there, just perfect. And we do put ventilation holes in these in the summer, which is something else to think about if you're shipping perishables. Let me go get one of these triangle boxes and I'll show you it and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Okay, here's what we call a triangle box. These come in two different sizes, a 36 inch, which is what I have here, and a 25 inch, which is obviously about a foot shorter. Good and bad things about these. Uh, we use these to ship small trees and shrubs. Um, they do work well. Problem. They get destroyed. Uh, I haven't talked about loss rates yet, and I guess it's a good time to get into it. We track our loss rates, whether it be a damaged or lost shipment. Uh, with UPS, this is 2021, our loss and damage rate with UPS this year was well over a thousand shipments. I don't even know the count is zero. We had absolutely no losses, no damage. USPS, two and a half percent. Yeah, that doesn't sound like much. Triangle boxes, 
almost 7%. They either get smashed or they get lost. We've even had instances where we've had returns where the only thing we get back is the mailing label off this box. Everything else is gone. And of course, then we have to file a claim. Um, these types of boxes we don't have quite that much problem with, but we still have a 2.5% loss or damage rate with the USPS. Whether or not that's good for you or not, like I said, doesn't sound like much. But considering in the spring, it's not uncommon for us to ship from 1 to 200 shipments a day. And if you think you've got 100 shipments, 2.5 of those are either going to be lost or damaged. And if they're lost, you can file a claim, it's a hassle. If they're damaged, you can file a claim, it's a bigger hassle. Or it just may get denied, and in either case, you're going to have to replace the item. So, something to think about. And uh, as a rule, if it weighs five pounds or less, it's cheaper to send it USPS, Postal Service, than it is UPS or FedEx. That's just the way it is. Another thing you have to look at is what they call dimensional weight. So you've got, uh, you grab this big box here. This is 12 by 12 by 7. So you have a dimensional weight there. So you've got this box all put together, and you've got your widget in it that you made, and you've got the packing around it, and it weighs a pound. So that's uh, one pound is the minimum weight for any one pound or less, you're going to pay the minimum rate for priority mail. You're going to get into what they call dimensional weight. You may be upcharged because of the actual dimension on here. And with FedEx and UPS, you definitely will be upcharged for the additional weight. One of the boxes we use quite a bit is 22 by 12 by 5. For the most part, they weigh 8 pounds. However, because of the dimension and what they call dimensional weight, we pay 15 pounds shipping on it. And it doesn't matter if it's UPS or the USPS, it's the same thing, it's dimensional weight charge. So that's something you've got to think about. A lot of times with these uh, priority mail boxes you get from the post office, they don't really look at that uh, unless you get somebody that's trying to be a Karen. You don't have a problem with them, you know, like dimensional weight on this. A lot of times we ship these out, they're only two pounds. Well, if you went dimensional weight-wise, you'd probably be paying a whole lot more. We've never been dinged on it, but since it is a USPS box, they pretty much look the other way. Now, we'll talk about once the customer gets it. Okay, so you've shipped your item. The customer's received it. You can even check the tracking to make sure. And they're happy with it. Great. That's what it's supposed to be. What if they're unhappy? And we're gonna, I'm going to give you some experiences here shortly, but uh, the first thing you need to do is try to make it right. I mean, if you made a mistake and you sent them a birdhouse here that was like missing the bottom or it's broke or something like that, yeah, you need to make that right. And sometimes customers can get extremely irate, um, even though it's maybe not your fault. Uh, you sent something that says this side up, do not stand on end, do not tumble. And uh, whether it be the post office or UPS or FedEx, and I'm sure everybody's had this experience. You got all these arrows on there and cautions and everything. They leave it on your porch and it's upside down. Don't complain to the seller because there's nothing they can do about it. If you want to harp on it, call the carrier. Say, hey, you know, take a picture of it. Say, hey, wh what the hey here? You know, uh, it's got all these arrows on it and all this, and you did this anyway. Odds are you're not going to get a, a good response. It'll be like talking to a rock. But don't blame the seller. You know, if an item is smashed, upside down, whatever, don't blame the seller. You know, and we've had this a lot. You know, we get this uh, message, well, you know, I had this box here, and it's marked this side up and all this and that, and uh, they left it upside down and everything in there is damaged. And what are you going to do about it? Well... If they're polite, we will probably replace it if they're really damaged, if it's just upside down and somebody's complaining or complaining or whatever. Next thing you need to think about with your customer satisfaction is feedback. So, <clears throat> you set the birdhouse, you're happy with it. 
You've sent 25 of them. All the customers are happy with it. How many of that 25 are going to leave you positive feedback? I love it. It's great. It's just what I wanted. It was item is described. It's perfect. Two, if you're lucky. Now let's say you send them one of these and it was all crooked or broke or lopsided or not made straight or it's missing parts or whatever, and you've sent 25 of them out like that. How many negative feedbacks you're going to get? Probably 25. People will complain about something more than they will give you a positive feedback. And a lot of times we found they will complain about it in feedback and seller ratings and item rating before they contact you for a remedy. And in many cases, that feedback or rating is cannot be revoked, especially on eBay. Um, I don't think it can on Etsy. On Amazon, you can modify your rating or feedback. Just something to think about. The customer is always right. No, they're not. And we have had a lot of instances. I'm going to tell you about a couple of them. In fact, I'm going to tell you about the most recent one. This was just happened last week. And it was on Etsy. We had a message from a person who had never bought anything from us. I, if you're selling on Etsy, you can look to see what their order history is. Never bought anything from us. Complaining that the leather dress they bought from us was poorly made. It was defective. The stitching was coming apart. And I very politely told them, I said, you know, you have the wrong merchant or seller. So this is not something that we sell. And I got a message back almost this like, yes, it is. And I'm going to complain to Etsy, and I'm going to leave you bad feedback. Well, one of the things on Etsy is they cannot leave you bad feedback if you didn't send it to them, if you didn't sell it to them. Um, so I, back again, I says, you know, I'm sorry, we are not the person that sold this. We do not sell leather goods, dresses, clothes. We sell beehive equipment. We sell trees, shrubs, ground covers. We don't sell clothes. And well, I know I bought this from you, and I'm going to take this to Etsy, and you charge my credit card, and I'm going to object to it. And then it got really nasty after that. So what do you do? Well, I could have just ignored it, I suppose, because there's nothing they can do to me. I mean, they didn't buy it from me. And I never did get an apology, but I did turn that over to Etsy. Uh, let their customer service department handle that. Uh, we've had some other instances where I will get a complaint back about something. You know, we planted this and it died. Okay, you know, I looked up, when did you get it? <clears throat> 2019. Well, this is 2021. You know, well, you're either going to replace it or I'm going to leave you bad feedback. Okay, that is called feedback extortion. And if they would do that, and you can save that message, and you'll run into this every once in a while. We've had people say, you're going to send this to me next day air, or I'm going to leave you bad feedback. It's feedback extortion. Not allowed on Shopify. Not allowed on Etsy. Not allowed on eBay. Not allowed on Amazon. And it's probably not allowed on some of the other sites, too. These are the ones I'm familiar with. And if you turn that in, that person will get suspended. They're buying account will be suspended. You cannot extort goods, services through a threat of a negative feedback. But you're going to get it. It's going to happen. I guarantee it. We've had it time after time. Okay, another thing we get, and I'm bringing up all these little things just so you kind of know what to expect if you enter the e-commerce market. Um, We'll go back to this birdhouse again. Let's say you put this up there for $20 plus shipping. And you'll get a message from somebody. Well, so-and-so is selling that for $15 plus shipping. Or free shipping. Or something like that. Will you match that? No. If you want it that bad, buy it from them. I'm not going to reduce my price. And you'll, a lot of times the stuff's made up. It's not even true. You know, though, well, I saw, you know, so-and-so or other sellers. I always like that one. Other sellers are doing this. 
or other sellers are selling it for this much, then buy it from them. Don't bother me with it. And I can be kind of a a-hole that way because we have been doing this for so long, we have such a large customer base that if I get, for lack of a better word, a bunch of Karens, they're going to get back whatever they give me. And if something is wrong with an item and a, a, a person replies, you know, politely, hey, I got this and it's damaged and, you know, uh, can you replace it or can you send me a different one? Can you give me a credit or something? I will work with them night and day, uh, no problem. If somebody comes off being an absolute Karen, which I'm using that word because the other word is, I would probably get dinged for... Uh, monetization and ads on there. Can't be swearing on here. It's family friendly channel. <clears throat> I get these people that come off and you know it could be graphic, it could be uh, vulgar, it can, you know I could be threatened. And I, we, I've had all of this. I will go back at them the same way they came at me. Yeah people say yeah the customer is always right. No they're not. You get a somebody like that, that kind of attitude, you're going to get the exact thing, same thing back from me. And uh, to give you an example, we had a person here earlier this year who thought my shipping was too much. Well, that's outrageous. You know, you, you can send one of these. They also make flat rate boxes where you send everything for a flat rate. All that stuff fit in a flat rate box. Well, no, it wouldn't because they don't know what we do. They don't know the sizes of stuff. But she says, well, I work for the post office, and I know that, you know, if you put all that stuff in a flat rate box, you can send it to me for $10. Well, it doesn't fit in a flat rate box. It's going to weigh more than that. And this is our shipping. If you don't like it, buy it. And from there, it went downhill. Of course, they couldn't leave me bad feedback on Etsy because they didn't buy anything. But they went to, like, other remote sites. You know, Dave's Garden is one of them, and there's a few other sites that, you can leave reviews for companies, you know, Yelp and some kind of places. So she went to every site she could find and left me this bad review. Complete with vulgar words in it. Well, guess what you can do? Once you find that out, notify, for example, Yelp. You know, somebody left us this. They're not even a customer. And it's full of uh, profanity. Well, now it get deleted. And then that person will lose their account. You know, I... And it's, kind of, it's a hassle going back, and, you know, but it's kind of a little bit of a revenge thing, so to speak. But expect to get things like that. You're going to have that when you work with the general public. Uh, I worked in retail way back in the 70s, you know, when I was in high school. And, of course, back then was the customer was always right. You know, if somebody brought somebody something in, you know, well, this doesn't work, it's broke or whatever, regardless of what it was, you <clears throat> smiled, gave your money back, you apologized. Well, once you get established in business, you don't necessarily have to do that if somebody's being a Karen on you. Believe me. Okay, so my last tip for selling and shipping stuff online is don't undersell. Know what your costs are. If you're even if you have your own website, there's a cost there. Uh, there's going to be a transaction fee. You know, people generally pay with credit cards or PayPal or Amazon Pay or Google Pay or one of those payment services, and we are experienced with all of them. There's a fee there. You're going to pay a fee. If you're selling on Etsy, eBay, or Amazon, there's going to be a listing fee and a final what they call a final value fee, which is the fee that is charged according to the value of the item. And some places figure the shipping cost into that, especially eBay. It used to be on eBay, they only charged on the sale, the sale price. So somebody had put something up for, put this up for 99 cents and charged $30 shipping. That way they got out of paying that final value fee because the final value fee did not apply to the shipping. So now you're looking at paying final value fee on not only the cost of your birdhouse, for example, but what it costs to ship it. Know what those costs are. Know what your cost of materials are. Know what your time is worth. Know what the cost of shipping materials are. Of course, here, you know, these are free. Um, our boxes we buy from Uline by the pallet. 
and we also have some custom made here locally uh, by a carton company. Uh, and if you are looking for cartons, Staples and Office Depot and um, Office Max, yeah, they have that stuff, but it's very expensive. If you're going to need a lot of it and you're, you can't use this free stuff from the post office, look to Uline. Even if you're paying UPS delivery on it for a, a small amount, it's still going to be cheaper than going to like Office Max or Office Depot or one of those places to buy a box or two at a time. So, and know what your carton sizes are. If you're doing a whole lot of the same thing, you can, once you hit 100 cartons, the price is cheaper per carton than if you're buying less than 100. At least on you line it is. So that's something else to keep in mind. Okay, so now you know your costs. You've got that all down in black and white. And don't just kind of think, you know, well, I, I think this cost me $4 to build and I can sell it for 20 and, you know, come out okay. No, don't do it that way. Make a spreadsheet or at the very least write all this stuff down. How much did the wood cost? You know, you've got nails, you've got glue, you know, you got your time. Okay, now you're going to list it on, let's say Etsy, for instance, it's going to cost me 20 cents to list it. Then there's going to be a final value fee according to how much the item is plus the shipping. You know, how much is that going to cost? How much is the box going to cost? What's the actual shipping cost going to be? You know, it depends where it's going. Uh, there's zones, so what Shipping something from Illinois to Iowa, just right next door, is a whole lot less money than shipping something from Illinois to Hawaii or Oregon or Maine or Alaska. We even ship stuff to Alaska. That's expensive. But know what your costs are so you're not coming out on the short end. I mean, you're, you're not doing this for free. Those are my little selling tips. You made something in your shop. Maybe you made something with your Cricut die cutter. Maybe you made something with your CNC, your laser engraver. Whatever project you're making, these are just some little tips on that. I didn't go into how to set up an Etsy account or how to set up eBay, how to set up Amazon, how to set up WooCommerce. Those are all completely different subjects, and we could go on for hours with that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into that. Just some little quick tips. A few experiences we've had for the last 20 years, 20 plus years, of selling an e-commerce. So, build your business. Wish you great success. If you got anything out of this, appreciate you getting a thumbs up. A lot of people aren't going to agree with that customer's always right thing, but when you get into this a lot, you'll be changing your mind, believe me. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.